So we've already built out all of the infrastructure to support our JWT. Now what this is going to boil down to creating all of the code to actually intercept the JWT, create the JWT, and at the very end, all we will have to do is add one cool little line to our login that will actually return the token to the user. But before we get started with that, let's talk about what's actually going to happen. So first thing is we're going to use a filter chain like we talked about before to intercept the token. So user will come in, the filter chain is going to lead to a piece of code which will is essentially a really fancy if else statement that's going to check every single HTTP request for the bare uh, token. And regardless if it finds one or not, what it's going to do is it's going to go to the controller and based on if the user is actually logged in or not, which is the code we've already generated, remember we've already actually coded this up, and if it's uh, authenticated, it will generate the JWT and it will return with the login. So the JWT is going to actually return with the login. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to add what's called an authentication entry point. And the authentication entry point is going to handle exception handling because exception handling in Spring Security is way different than actual Spring Boot. And that's because all of this code that we are building, all of this authentication or this uh, authentication is happening before the server let. So you need to be able to actually handle the, you need to handle the exception before it reaches the server let, which requires totally different code. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna go into our security and we are going to generate a authentication entry point. And I'm just gonna call it JWT, let me see, auth, um, entry point. Okay, so we went ahead, we generated that. Now we need to implement the authentication entry point. So we go authentication entry point and go ahead, click the red light bulb. So go ahead, click that. And within this commence code, what we are going to have is we're just going to add this code right here. We're going to add response, send error. And this is going to send an error HTTP servlet response. And we'll say, so HTTP servlet response, that is not the right one, that is an interface. So let's see. And we don't want accepted, we don't want conflict. I'm trying to find the one that is, un there's an unauthorized one in here somewhere. So let's just see. So I'll just go like this and use IntelliSense to try to find it. There we go, that's perfect, okay. So next what we need to do is we want to pass in the auth exception and we're going to get the message from the authorization exception. And all of that code is built in for you so you don't have to worry too much about it. But if you want to extend this, feel free to implement this in any way that you want to. Now you have um, exception handling, let's just put it that way. So let's go into our configuration and let's go into here and we need to actually bring this in. So what I am going to do is right before or I'm going to say private and JWT authentication entry point, and we will have auth entry point right here. And I will put this just manually into the constructor. So we'll go here, auth entry point. Then I'm gonna go down here and say auth entry point is equal to auth entry point. Looks good. So we registered this one-time exception handling into the uh, security filter chain right here. So we're gonna go into here and we're going to add the ability to have exception handling. So make sure that you put this part so we have exception handling right here. Then we're going to have our add authentication entry point. So go ahead, put in authentication entry point. And then what we want to do is we want to also add an and the peculiarity of builder patterns. You gotta have that and thing there. Then we have the session management. And what we also want to do is we want, because we're adding JWT, we have to disable sessions. So in order to do that, we bring it, we already brought in our ses session management. Now we're gonna have our session creation policy and our session creation policy is going to be stateless. Then go down here and add another and. And now we have already tackled our JWT authentication entry point. So what we need to do now is we need to actually have a class that is going to generate the token for us. And in doing that, all we need to do is create a class 
You could call it a token provider. You could call it a token generator. I like the word generator. I think it sounds more appropriate for what it is and more explicit, but you could call it a token provider. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so next thing, we need to add a component at the top so that we can access in this in other parts of our app. And we want to have a public method called, what do you know, a generate token. So we're gonna have our generate token right here. And we can pass in the authentication and we will have the authentication name as a parameter. So first we will go in here and we're going to get the username from the actual authentication object object. So go here and we will have get name. Next thing that we want to do is we need a date because JWT tokens have expir expiry dates, expiry dates, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to go in here and generate the current date and we will use that to set the expiration date on our token. So go here, go date and make sure to bring in the date. After that, we want to set the expiry date. And this can actually be, or this is supposed to be um, a setting that you can control. So if you, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a constant here in a second, and it will have a way for you to actually control it. And if you don't know what a constant is, I'll show you what it is here in a second. So we go here, we're gonna have current date guys dot get time, and then we will have expiry. So we'll call this uh, JWT expiration and that doesn't exist yet because we need to create what are called constants you could put this in the application um, properties but i'm going to create constants um, because you want to be able to change this down the line and we're going to have a, a lot of security constants here in a second if you don't know what a constant is let me show you a constant is when you just go in here and you add a public static, so we go public, so we'll go public static final, and we will have, this will be a um, int. Actually, this would probably be better as a long because this could get pretty large, and we'll say JWT, and in a constant you have, well, it looks like this, I don't know exactly, I think this is either camel case, snake case, it doesn't really matter, but set it to, 7,000, I think actually, yeah, 70,000 should be an appropriate one. And then what we can do in here is we can go in and I'm just going to copy this real quick. We can just go in real quick, copy this and have our security constant. So we'll have security constants dot JWT expiration like that. And it looks a lot cleaner and you can have a centralized place where you can change it later down the line if you want to. Now what we need to do is we need to generate the token. So we'll go string, we'll have token is equal to JWT builder. So JWTS dot builder. And now what we need to do is we need to actually bring in JWT authentication. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go down into my Palm Excel file and I am going to paste this JWT token IO palm.xl file. And this will bring in JSON web token for us so that we can get access to all types of handy um, little utilities to make that easier. And also make sure to uh, reload your Maven. And what I'll do is go into here. And if you look, we now have JSON, JSON web token and we have this fancy little builder so that we don't have to worry about so much the implementation details of setting up a J JWT token. So first we're gonna set the subject. So we'll, have, we'll say set subject and we will pass in the username that we created. And it looks like we're getting a error here. J oh, this should be JWTS. And I'm gonna have to rebring that in because I think I brought in the wrong one. So make sure JWTS and I spelled subject wrong. So we go subject. Okay. So next what we want to do is we want to set the issued at, and this is going to be, you guessed it, the actual new date that we are going to use as the current date. It's the current date. <laughs> okay. Next is going to be, we're going to set our expiry date in here. 
and that will be handled by the code up above and then we will have signed with and the signing JWT tokens are signed with a certain algorithm <clears throat> and you can actually tell in the in the tokens so the tokens split up into three parts separated by a dot you really you probably don't even need to know this but there's an algorithm that does the signing you can actually see it in the JWT token so we'll pass in our JWT now we need a JWT secret and we will go into our security constants and we will create a JWT secret in here this is actually very important in a real project so if you if somebody is able to obtain your JWT secret you're pretty much pawned and they can now generate tokens on their own accord and they can issue tokens to themselves so make sure that you do not let this get out so we go here so it goes JWT secret and we will just call this a secret once again just for course purposes Okay, now we need to bring in this via the security constant. So we go security constants dot JWT secret, which is going to be secret. Okay, so we'll have compact. And then we will, let's see, then we are going to return the token. So once we get done with that, it's going to return the token. And we have now created our very first token. Okay, but we... While we're here, we need a couple of other uh, methods as well, too. We need to be able to get the username from the JWT, and we also need to be able to validate the token. So we'll go in here, go string dot get username. So we'll say get username from JWT. We'll have string and pass in the token in the form of a string. And then we'll have this thing called claims and what claims are going to do is actually reach into our token and get them. So all JWT tokens have a, a part in them that's called claims. And this is, this is actually going to get all of those claims. So we'll go here, go alt, we have our parser and set signing key. It's going to be JWT secret. Let's see here. So JWT secret and we need to pass in our security constants again and pass in the JWT secret. Then we go down here and we're going to, go into, to say parse claims. So the token, we're going to pass in our token. And we'll get body. And then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to return claims.get subject. Okay, and then the last thing that we need to do is we need to be able to validate the token. So when we validate the token, we're just going to make a method that's going to uh, rely on JWTIO, the POM file that we uh, just installed, to actually do most of the heavy lifting for us. Thank God, because that would be so complicated if we had to comp uh, if we had to code that ourselves. So go in here, and we're going to just have a nice little try catch here that's going to use JWTS dot parser and set signing key and security constants again dot jwt secret and parse claims jws and pass in token okay so that looks good and if that is true what we want to do is we want to go down into here and return true next we need to have a form of authentication and what we are going to do is have exception so we'll have exception and within our exception we will throw a new authentication credentials not found so we'll say authentication credentials not found exception and we will say jwt was expired inc or incorrect we'll say expired or incorrect Okay, that looks good. Now that we've got our generate token, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually start working on the middleware for the authentication. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this video. We'll work on that next in the next video. If you, if you like this, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.